Hey, hello everyone, and welcome back for part five of our EKG basic series. My name is Austin Kaiser. I'm a flight paramedic and the uh, clinical educator for PHI over here in California. So today in part five, we are going to be talking about ruling in uh, STEMI. Uh, a lot of times uh, we roll up on a patient, especially a younger patient that's having tw uh, uh, chest pain, we typically try to look for something other than STEMI. And so we are going to talk about the commonalities between STEMI and pericarditis. It's a very common question um, that, uh, that I get in different EKG classes on how to tell the difference between pericarditis and STEMI. Um, and it seems to be a hot topic, and so I thought that I would address it in a very brief video today. So let's talk about rule-in and rule-out criteria for STEMI. So why do we need to talk about this? We need to talk about it because we really need to be ruling in STEMI versus ruling it out. So just because we see this 30-year-old patient, chest pain, uh, we tend to not think that they're having an MI, especially uh, the types of 30-year-olds that we see that are calling 911 for chest pain. They may have like some sort of drug addiction or, or alcohol dependency, and uh, we typically don't think that they're having an MI, and we think that they're probably having some sort of pericarditis. But what I would say is we need to really think about ruling in STEMI as much as possible instead of ruling it out. Uh, and we're going to go over the differences between pericarditis and STEMI over the next few minutes here. So we see this 34-year-old male came into the emergency department, has been having transient chest pain over the past several days with associated shortness of breath. So um, what we see in this is we see a, uh, a sinus tack at about 105, maybe uh, 110. Uh, we have a normal axis. I don't see any type of disqualifiers. I see some like real non-specific changes here. I have uh, like a little bit of ST elevation in lead two, uh, maybe a little bit in lead three, like a millimeter in lead three, a millimeter in AVF. Um, I see maybe a little bit of PR um, segment depression in V5 and V6. That's a very common finding in pericarditis. Um, uh, not really seeing a whole lot, but I'm kind of thinking this is a 34-year-old male that's been having transient chest pain over several days. How could he be having an acute MI, uh, an acute inferior MI? Uh, and so it goes against kind of our, our nature to think that this 34 year old male could be having a STEMI um, <clears throat> in the inferior and maybe a little bit in the lateral wall. So that inferior lateral MI or that circumflex lesion, um, it really is hard for us to pull that trigger. And so let's talk about the things that make the difference between a STEMI and pericarditis. So first things first, think STEMI first. Don't rule out STEMI, rule it in. So there are three great rules that you can use that will absolutely help you to rule in STEMI when you see a, <clears throat> a non-specific uh, ST elevation or some pretty minor ST elevation. So is there ST depression anywhere on the 12 lead except V1 and AVR? If yes, it's a STEMI. Um, so let me say that again. If there is ST depression, anywhere except V1 and AVR, it is a STEMI. Is the ST elevation in lead three greater than the ST elevation in lead two? If yes, it is a STEMI. And finally, is the ST segment uh, or the ST elevation horizontal or tombstone? If yes, then that is a STEMI. The only type of, or the only time that we could have ST elevation that would not be considered um, STEMI would be considered more of a pericarditis or more of an early repolarization is if we have a concave ST elevation. ST elevation that would really hold water well. Um, uh, but if your ST segment is horizontal or convex, meaning tombstone uh, T waves, then that is absolutely a STEMI. So is there ST depression anywhere except V1? That's a STEMI. Is the ST elevation in lead three bigger than the ST elevation in lead two? That's a STEMI. And is the ST elevation horizontal or convex? That is a STEMI. So let's look back at this 34 year old's 12 lead. So we see that um, we don't really have any ST elevation, um, even 
or excuse me, ST depression, even V1 and AVR, I wouldn't classify that as real ST depression, less than a less than a millimeter. So I wouldn't classify that as depression anyway. But uh, but we definitely don't see any depression anywhere else in this 12 lead. And then we look at the ST elevation in lead two, which is about two millimeters. And then we look at the ST elevation in lead three, which is about one millimeter. So lead three's ST elevation is definitely not greater than lead two, so we didn't meet that criteria either. But now we're down to our last criteria, and we see that the ST elevation in lead two is definitely conve or concave. This would hold water really well, so that does not meet criteria for STEMI um, uh, or for, for a definitive STEMI. <coughs> but then we look at the ST elevation in lead three and the ST elevation in lead AVF, and we see that those are pretty horizontal. That is some pretty flat ST elevation, and that absolutely meets our criteria, so that is a STEMI, because we know that if ST elevation is horizontal or convex, meaning that it is a tombstone, that is a STEMI. Um, but if we're looking at things like pericarditis or we're looking at things like uh, we're looking at things like uh, uh, an early benign, or benign early repolarization, then we do tend to see this, uh, this concave ST elevation here like we see in V2, um, <coughs> which uh, uh, that would hold water really well around the J point. So ruling in pericarditis, um, we have that PR depression in multiple leads. It's not always present, but that is typically the, um, the, the hallmark finding that a lot of people like to talk about uh, when they are ruling in pericarditis is that they have widespread PR de segment depression. And then we also have that concave ST elevation. So looking at this patient right here, we see that we have this PR segment that seems to be sitting below the isoelectric line in several of these leads. So we see the isoelectric line, but after the P wave, the PR segment seems to be like a half a millimeter down below the isoelectric line, and that is PR segment depression. And then we see the ST elevation in lead two in this one, and in lead one, and in V4, V5, and V6. Um, it's all very concave. It's like a U shape, um, and it would hold water really, really well. And so this right here is going to be a pericarditis case. So this was just a really quick video for you guys on ruling in STEMI. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out at akaiser at phiairmedical.com, and we will see you guys on the next one.